my god, Shenmue 3 is here, people. All right, guys, I know it's been a while since I've hit you up with any videos, and that unfortunately the channel may have been suffering for it. But look, I, I can't begin to tell you how much I apologize for it. Major subscribers or not, I'm proud of all the work that we've done here over the years, and I only want to continue to keep making more for you guys. But these past couple of months have been major doozies for all of us. Major life changes have been going on, people have been moving on, moving out, people getting married, people suffering from personal problems. I won't even begin to get into any of that. But in general, life. Life has been happening, and that means good times and bad times. Everyone is doing what they can, and sadly, while I wished YouTube could have been a sustainable employment for all of us, the sad reality is, well, it's, it's kind of not. I mean, for a lot of people, YouTube has been very clear about its direction, and the little guys aren't in their best interest, and kind of haven't been for some time, so workarounds had to be made. We're not entirely sure what those are yet, but hey, we're trying to get established on other sites like Twitch and uh, any others that may come along the way, but... Do not worry, we are not abandoning the YouTube platform. It's where we started and it's where we plan to stay for the foreseeable future. All I can encourage from you guys is just to continue to be as supportive as you can, and <laughs> I don't mean that by throwing cash at us. Well, that would be nice. I mean supportive in the more realistic fashion. If you enjoy our content or any specific under the radar YouTubers content, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. I mean, if, if, it's, if it's no trouble. I mean, watch the stuff regularly? I don't know. YouTube is kind of weird like that. Bottom line, do what you guys can to support your favorite channels. YouTube isn't doing us any favors, so we kind of got to look out for our own, you heard? All right then, moving on. So during these past months when I told you, like, life and its problems were getting in our way, Shenmue 3 of all games decided to silently release itself from under our noses and just come out. And while my thoughts were, oh my god, yes, my other thoughts were, oh my god, no. You see, I originally wanted to do a build-up review series for Shenmue 3 when its release was on the horizon, talking about my history with the first two installments, and while I still can do that, and, and will do that, it just kind of sucks that I didn't see this coming. And now, now, it's just awkward. So, what am I going to do here? Well, I'm going to give you my first general impressions on what I think of Shenmue 3 so far. I'm only a couple hours into the game, and I haven't really gotten too far, as I do spend a good deal of my time training and gambling uh, in the game, not in real life. But I do feel I've played enough of the game to tell you how I feel it compares to its original 16-year-old predecessors. Fear not, this is spoiler-free. And also, this is not a review of Shenmue 3 that will come later down the line. So one of my first reaction was how plain the title screen and font looked upon startup. Anybody else feel, felt a little off about this one? Or saw that it was a little off? It seems like it was just a high resolution JPEG with the Microsoft Word font. Yeah, this one screen immediately reminded that this was a game made with a budget. Not a deal breaker by any means, but I was kind of concerned about that. One neat feature though was that at the title screen there was a recap video that provides for those who missed out on the first two adventures. It's kind of like how Kingdom Hearts 3 did it by providing you with cliff note videos with the major story elements. It's sufficient enough, but any real Shinmu fan will know that this is not going to be a good substitution for the actual experience. So when you start the game, I am happy to see that Shenmue 3 does indeed pick up exactly where the second game left off, and it seamlessly moves into the next part of the plot, in true Shenmue fashion. And when you start hearing the characters talk and seeing them move and interacting with others, the Shenmue fan in me rejoiced with excitement because while this game graphically looks great, and indeed next-gen, the spirit of the original games and how they were made has carried over into this game as well, keeping everything consistent. And when I say consistent, I mean the hokey way the characters speak, the awkward dialogue between Drio and passerbys, the stiff movement and animations when the characters talk. This was the kind of stuff that we had to deal with when the Sega Dreamcast was in its prime. For a whole two minutes, if you get my meaning. Shenmue's approach to all of these things way back when was absolutely legendary for its time. Nothing like it had ever been done before, and it was the most expensive video game series to have ever been made because of how much trial and error Yu Suzuki and Sega went through to acquire the amount of detail they did, including accurate weather for the time period. Of course, by today's standards, if you go back and play those games with new eyes, you will wonder how some of these things ever got past the drawing board. But trust me, back then, 
you could not have done better within the console and technological limitation. And as far as choices, it's very much believed that in terms of directing, the games were made to simulate the old-style martial arts films. Shenmue 3 may have a graphical facelift that matches what we're expected to see for games of today, but I am overjoyed to see that Yu Suzuki decided that instead of trying to change the way Shenmue was in order to appeal to a new market that probably wouldn't give a damn about it, he instead decided to please the traditional fans who made the game happen in the first place by allowing it to be as consistent to the original games as possible. The saying goes that you cannot please everybody, but you do have to please somebody, and Suzuki made the right call in pleasing the only audience he knew would truly care. Consistent or not, that doesn't mean that the game doesn't have any improvements. As much as I love Shenmue 1 and Shenmue 2, there are some quirks about those games that uh, haven't aged too well, and even back then were kind of questionable. First of all, money. Money always felt like it was a big deal more than it really was back then. You needed it for sure, and there were odd jobs and things you could do to acquire it, but I don't think anybody ever went broke in Shenmue 1 or 2. The need for money was almost non-existent. Outside of buying a couple of cheap items only once to advance the plot, paying off someone for information, or maybe even paying cheap rent until the plot decided you didn't have to anymore, money was just one of those things that you felt better about having, but seldom ever really needed to use it. And I know some of you are going to throw the arcade and capsules at me, but remember, all of that stuff was just good for wasting time or doing side things for fun. It wasn't something that you needed to do in order to keep going. Shenmue 3 has pretty much solved that problem, but it probably solved it in one of the most eye-rolling ways they could have, and I understand why they did it, and I did argue about it with George, our other Brotherhood of Gaming member. <laughs> How did they solve this? Drio now gets hunger pains. Food was never anything you had to worry about in the Shinmu games, but now there is a constant need for it. Whenever Dryo is running around or being active, his health and or stamina bar will start to decrease. You see those balls down in the corner? Yeah, those aren't staying full forever, trust me. The lower it goes, the less effective Ryo is for just about anything. So you will need to keep a steady supply of food in Ryo's inventory, which means having to spend money to stock up on the food items. Haha, <laughs> see where this is going? And after you're doing this, you will see just how fast money will start to go when you begin investing. So now the need to do odd jobs and gamble for the cha-ching has never been more necessary. I mean, it's not like this is a bad game mechanic or anything. It's just that after having experienced two adventures where I didn't have to worry about food, to now all of a sudden having to worry about Rio's getting his three squares a day, that means I'm just gonna have to start walking more than I run. Yay. But to the game's credit, it did solve an age-old problem, and it did give you something to do with the money and food collecting. So it is something. Additionally, Rio can now find an abundance of medical herbs that are scattered throughout the land, which you can also sell at stores for some small cash and exchange medicines. So, you know, that's kind of handy. Oh, another feature that Shenmue was obviously well known for was its combat. Again, like money, fighting was something that you really didn't do a whole lot of in the Shinmu games if you think about it. Like before, it always felt like you were doing more combat training and mastering of the martial arts skills than you did any actual combat. Some of that could be attributed to events you could have missed out on, but otherwise the major focus of Shenmue was its story and the adventure not just all fighty-fighty. And Shenmue's combat was always a point of contention for most people, at least from what I remember, certainly was for me. I mean, you do got some diehard Shenmue fans that believe that it's the most well-executed form of combat. Okay. And then you have others that think it's kind of a clunky mess that works only a quarter of the time, so eh, you just simply mash punch and kick until you won. Trying to do any of the special moves wasn't always easy because like any fighting game, the combos and techniques were always depending on which way the character was facing and where the camera was. And in fighting games, they generally lock down the camera and only allow the characters to be at certain angles, ensuring that you could always do the moves when you need to and or when they were correctly inputted. Shenmue on the other hand always felt like a damn free for all. The camera would go anywhere, Drio could go and look anywhere, it's not like it was awful, I mean, it got the job done, but that's kinda all it did. Trying to do any of those moves you painstakingly learned was always a pain in the ass, and 90% of the time they never worked. When I played Shenmue and got into a fight, 
I mostly relied on guarding, countering, and grab moves, in tandem with just timing my simple punches and kicks. I didn't really bother wasting my time trying to do any of the fancy stuff because, I'm sorry, it never worked when I wanted it to. And what sucked about Shenmue 1 and 2 is that you couldn't regularly practice combat whenever you want it. You really, for the most part, could only practice it by yourself when no one was around. Shenmue 3 again feels like it, for the most part, solved this problem, because not only does it feel like you will be engaging in more combat this time around, but combat itself has changed. The camera is now always behind Ryo in third person, no matter where he moves, and none of the moves from previous games require any directional input this time, just button combinations. Yes, thank you! This is a much better fighting system than the previous ones. So now, in combat, Ryo can strafe around the enemy and punch and kick and guard as usual, but just by inputting the button commands quickly, Ryo will automatically do any of his signature martial arts. And the more you train Ryo, will increase the damage each of those moves do when you connect them. Yes, you can now simply spar with people to increase Ryo's skills. This, I believe, is a great improvement because now you can actually practice and know how to improve Ryo for when the real conflicts come down the line. Also because now, in order to beat the opponents, it requires you to be skilled with certain martial arts and gaining more endurance. Training Ryo to increase all of these statistics now feels fun and actually necessary. So, by the by, I definitely appreciate how Shenmue 3 tries to be consistent in how it presents itself to be just like the previous games, with the experience of doing what you are known to do in Shenmue, along with its silly quirks. But also, Shenmue 3 takes the opportunity to improve upon some of the concepts that weren't fully realized or properly executed in the games before. My adventure in Shenmue 3 so far is still only just getting started, but from what I've played thus far, I am very happy and relieved that the spirit of the originals is alive and well, even after a 16-year hiatus. If there is one concerning cloud looming over all of this, it's the potential negative criticism I can already see coming miles away. Non-Shenmue fans and or critics on big time websites are likely going to see all of these elements of Shenmue 3 and call them dated flaws because of the game's effort to be consistent with its past games that are over a decade old. Which means the jittery character animations and the awkward dialogue trees, among other things that are just going to completely fly over their heads. Which may result in this game being written off as a relic that should have stayed gone. To the viewers that don't know anything about Shenmue and are watching out of morbid curiosity on whether or not they should even dive into Shenmue 3, let me make this clear. Shenmue 3, like Kingdom Hearts 3, is a game made for its dedicated fanbase. It's not unwelcoming to newcomers, but if you haven't been with the series, all of its little easter eggs, all of its little fan teasers, its special quirks, its gimmicks, all of this is going to be lost on you if you jump into the game on its own. Shenmue has a legacy that goes back to the early days of the Sega Dreamcast, and if you want to see what the hype was about, and you are interested in trying something new, I can guarantee that Shenmue is unlike many games of today, and is without question a fresh experience, and now more than ever is a pretty damn good time to join the fandom. The original game was made for the Sega Dreamcast with its Dreamcast sequel only being released in Japan and PAL regions, while America was unfortunately left out until the sequel was eventually released exclusively on the original Xbox. For over a decade, the story was left unfinished, and these were the only ways to play the games, but thankfully with Shenmue 3's announcement, it didn't take Sega long to jump on the hype train and remaster both Shenmue 1 and 2 for the current generation of systems, including Steam, so if you have any interest, I would highly recommend buying the HD collection along with Shenmue 3 and having yourself a wild and fun ride. I do not know yet if Shenmue 3 concludes the saga, but until then, this has been my first impression. Thank you for watching The Brotherhood of Gaming, I'm William Morris, and we will see you in the next video.